Uh, is everyone ready to start? I sent out the one AC. I don't, I don't have know. it yet, so give me a second. Of course. I'm good whenever. Uh, Truman, good. Uh, give me one second. I haven't opened the doc yet. I just, okay. yeah, I just got the email. Give me a second. I'm good whenever. Uh, Tommy, just let me know when you're good. Yeah. Uh, let me organize my. Uh, does the one you see need like multiple flows or is it? I don't know what that means. Okay, like, I never mind. Well, we presume know. you'd blow the one AC on one flow. <laughs> uh, good. <coughs> Tommy? Yeah, I'm good now. All right, great. Part one shout out current debate renders black scholarship invisible. It distances itself from real world violence. So Why power structures re the debate resolutions normally call for federal action in this approach debaters. So around terms like terrorism and nuclear without blinking debate simulation over distance debaters from real world participation, political context of debate is about the objective sense of policymakers, the imperialistic persona, integrally linked into practice of power that produce oppression, the role of the just mode, access to black scholarship, meaning they must prioritize black authors in approaching this topic. It's only self serving and arbitrary to ignore black analysis of violence. We need to start with underlying cause of anti blacks, not band aid solutions. King, our faltering efforts to deal with racist devoted to censors rather than root causes may explain why racism keeps repeating antagonism against blacks but is not white superiority has been treated playing with their companies are broken like legal remedies and deal with racism without let the legislature to birth the Jim Crow until we get to the root cause of the problem lives on the role of the ballots to confront root causes of anti-blackness this requires endorsing a method of deconstructing anti-blackness and our approaches to the topic precludes specific calls or actions since we can sol can solve what we don't understand part two is liberalism and laws racial capitalism is here white institutions are on black exploitation but so and right hyper visualized anti-black violence spread or discourse around black life and his lack of value from Minneapolis to Orlando to Rio manages a murder of black people, rarefied racial hierarchy for whites facing increased unemployment for your terroristic violence and prevailing political trends. They add the industrialization capital fight are part of a much larger trend of global economy that results in ever inventing forms of cap. Not humans are increasing as a mercy of cap exploitation. These entail the racial fixation of continuous accumulation that treats certain populations in need of removal and AI worsens the problem. It reinvents racial hierarchies of human out of the loop tech and surrogate human effect that strengthens anti-blackness while claiming to end it for right all. One. Automated robots take the human out of the loop in which tech can be performing machines themselves. The machine and the racialized uh, other posts are similar, such as displacing their already full human in the conceptions of white law techno, liberalism advances post racial futurity by asserting post labor world in which racial differences are transcended yet by displacing the racialized labor relations and automation and AI techno liberty to just the valent racial logic it claims to resolve through the liberal pockets are near to the concealed racial subjugation. They add autonomy and protection on techno objects that populate accounts of capitalist futurity to pencil racial relational structure of object and subject. The surrogate human effect displaces human shall with objects that hold the potential to become autonomous, right bearing liberal subject, techno liberals, the post race, post gender, which enables a tech in which humanity can be affirmed only through categories catered for cap accumulation. This results in anti black terror. The algorithmic bias is hidden under the guise of racial neutrality, pervasive at uh, all operational levels. Ramsey Jones, AW select targets based on algorithm that are not racially neutral. Racism operates at a very level of implementation, distribution, and regulation, and at most developed by white, uh, white males when it comes to facial recognition for desert things. People error rates were over 19% and 30 34.4%. Error, error, percent error margins but recognizing dark women they add these systems position whiteness as the center objectivity the vast majority of white people benefit from reproducing systems that barely notice the learned biases are strengthened the racism continues to be reinforced thus i affirm states ought to be unleashed autonomous weapons i endorse the resolution's core principle to the lens of black marxism indication of the negation of a world of racial capitalism robinson with each historical movement the rationale of dominant empire comes a more transparent race as it was a epistemology and organizing structure from the causal intel to the lethal rule of law the black radical tradition began overtake marxism in the work of Dubois, james and Right, black freedom fighters for ancestors were African recruited into related systems of oppression, liberation projects in Africa, the Caribbean, and Americans acquired emerging collective forms of rebellion. They merged the negation of negation of the world system. Part three is at your service. Laws reflect white anti freedom hidden behind technical efficiency. The image above is rash is the mechanical Negro, a robot slave who further white fantasies of black labor and cult dystopian fears of extinction for it all, too.
the term robot is derived from the Czech word for slavery. A robot revolution is caught up with the debate about humanity of robots and the potential to end of civilization, which is entangled with the abolition of trans and slave chains and emergence of free labor as a racial category. The idea that some bodies are meant solely for work informs colonialism of shit slavery. Robots are designed slaves since there's an ontological state, mass for a political state. Robots like indebted to workers produce a fall freedom that holds the possibility of reproduction is the white liberal subject in the absence of unfree labor. What's seen an electric corporation, novelty, mechanical men, racist, and mechanical negro is a racial object who replaces the slave, can never question the system in which it holds because robots are threat and revolt the emerging predominant cultural figure for labor. AWs pit the human against the non, attempting to alter understanding of violent way uh, for reaffirming this woe makes it after first move to check anti-black violence where it all three killer robots are going into the crisis of violence against the human against the non, subsuming the racialized and gender epistemology of prior affirmations of authorized violence. The idea that robots represent a radical break in how violence is defined and reaffirms imperial sovereignty by aligning violence so already human. We approach AWs as a devastatingly familiar tech predicated uh, by colonialism. We see colonial divisions in human energy and our contemporary movement in which life is by deintegration sets outside the human society and focusing on autonomous positive consequences are racial these are the racialized workers who produce the tech for all for automation for social and economic veteran marks and new libertarian manifestation which unfree racialized workers are simultaneously erased and necessary production of a racial opposite that implies that it is not the black workers are with exploitable but the tech eliminates the need of population racialized exploitable workers the eradication of slave labor through automation echoes fascist techno utopianism the fetishist new tech that eliminate resistance over no workers of color the machinery production race haunts every, every imagination uh, every imaginaries that full remove the human from the fame in contrast it africanizes the endless cycle of racial crap that automation causes board all five an automated future with deep valid racialized workers the fantasy of whiteness all the pure us that never existed without enslaved the basis of cap development the fantasy of automation is always incomplete a post-race would have against the tech industry new luminaries a certain universal humanity the running racialized labor invisible they add cap season with the ongoing differences of free labor and of slavery only by understanding the indebtedness of freedom of slavery can we attain the generally anti-cap politics freedom of the free human liberal subject cannot come but without unfreedom of the non-human the app is uniquely key notion of progress within the state keep us contained with white supremacy anything but anything but a full ban laws produce ban reproduces the same violence to clarify the after defense and irreversible ban dylan if there's no progress but modification intensification of the future will be what is before the future and present collide because of the temporality of the state violence the time of repetition intensification accumulation white supremacy functions as a tape a temporal prison where black liberation is delayed destroyed by the capacity to pass trauma rooted in slavery a shape of state time extent of violence in the past world revolution time and temporal regimes under so the state time and a ban is an investment is an in investment in the state it's a rejection of state action any reason states wouldn't comply affirm since it proves that actions ought to be banned okay uh you're good for a cross yeah okay uh let's talk about the af frame mechanism or af advocacy does it garner any pre-fiat offense uh the AF's framing mechanism talks about uh, confronting root causes of anti-Blackness. I don't think that like just reading the AF uh, is enough to garner an AF ballot, but rather proving that the AF is a good idea underneath the role of the ballot. I guess like, does the AF make a spillover claim that like reading the AF does something or like voting AF does something to like well, sort of- Our framing mechanisms talks about in the context of said like debate spaces, our argument about like Black Marxism is not uh, relying or contingent <laughs> upon some spillover claim after the judges vote AF, but rather it is a question of it is consistent with that and that being a good thing underneath the roll of the ballot. Okay, yeah. I guess my question then is, does voting AF do anything? Okay, so- like, this is like walking us spectator. back and this is like walking us back in circles. The argument is a the app uh, is a way of understanding the harms of laws. We come before any of like these like I, we like this like the presumption arguments people make against like uh, this app don't make any sense because it's not a question of doing something like the apps like advocacy is not contingent on doing something but being consistent with black Marxism, which is a good idea underneath the framework. Like okay. spillover doesn't matter. So read Brinkley evidence. It says that. If it is true that current debate renders black scholarship invisible and voting AF doesn't do anything for that, then why should we vote AF? Uh, so Reed Brinkley isolates this problem within educational spaces, specifically debate, uh, where we look to things like uh, random existential catastrophes instead of talking about things like real world issues such as anti-blackness. Our yeah, argument, our argument for our argument for black, our, our okay, wait, wait, I, this is important. You finish. Our argument for black Marxism is not that it can magically get rid of anti-blackness, but rather it is a good way of evaluating the world. That being a good way of evaluating the world is better than the alternative and other forms of education because those <laughs> seek in order to call things like calling black, like calling okay. uh, like discussions of anti-blackness arbitrary right. or self-serving. Let's talk about about the role to judge um there's like some uh something after it saying that we must prioritize black authors in approaching the topic does that mean that like if i read an author who is not black we should just discredit them or like not evaluate what they say no that's not the argument it's the argument is that 
when there are strategies debaters utilize often in order to abstract away from the thesis of black scholars. The 1 and C will probably do this, and I will problematize that in the 1 AR that that is an example of what Reed Brinkley is criticizing. Okay, um, that's fine. Let's talk about the AF offense. Uh, this image, is it a reason to vote AF? It's just like the example of the war at all two card is talking about. Okay, all right, that's fine. Like, um, I don't think like an image is like an independent reason to vote AF. That'd be kind of weird. Okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, let's talk about the, I guess, Vora for evidence. It just seems to indicate that things like automation are bad. Um, why does it mean that like laws intrinsically are bad? Like, what? How do? How can the AF like resolve the impacts of automation being bad if we're producing so, tech as well? I don't think that that's the AF's burden underneath our role. About our claim is that automation <laughs> laws are an example, and what Vora at all at the top of the Vora at all one card talks about human out of the loop is something that is problematic. Uh, our burden is to prove why this problematic and blacks and marks is a way of analyzing those problems. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I want to take prep. The one in C, it's going to be, um, I think it's four. Yeah, four in then case. Uh, one sec. <coughs> Is case just going to be top down? Uh, yeah. Or I'll also post on case. It's going to start with like um, presumption stuff, I guess. I don't know where you would personally flow that, but. Uh, Am I going to need a separate flow for case? Um, I typically ask this question once debaters have started reading Spark, just for reference. So am I going to need like another page on case for like 20 cards? Uh, I second that question. <laughs> I guess it'll be safe to. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I I can't give like a definitive answer. Sorry, but, like it, okay, it, it'll no, probably be no, safe to have one. Yeah, no worries. Just um, and then also, uh, I have like a huge like block, um, of like paradigm issues. I don't know if you would also want to flow that on another page. Uh, just a heads up. Okay. Uh, let me know when everyone's good. I haven't gotten the doc yet. <laughs> oh, I just got it. Let me download it. Yeah, no worries, no worries. All right, I'm good whenever. <coughs> uh, uh, I am also good. Uh, are the other two people good? I'm good. OK. And Sai, you're good? Yes. OK, perfect. <coughs> Interpretation the British Missile Firm Frame Mechanism 30 Missile Frame. If they haven't read the affirmative violation, there's two shots on the dock. There's one philosophical critical and top of the cache, not disclosing the incentivizing air frame positions that are relevant artificial engagement and wind debates. Interpretation discourages third and fourth line testing and philosopher critical apps because we enter debate with your idea of what the affirmative frame mechanism is forcing us never contest their offense around generics against a framework instead of smart contextual strategies, destroying nuanced argumentation. It turns all their off offense because it proves that the only reason for why the things that their impacts that the affirmative isolated is because they don't disclose. Two reasons to proceed to get infinite amount of time from after the most efficient and effective answer to anything we could say against it while we only get four minutes around. This gives them tremendous advantage over what makes it possible to win substance. Three shifting is not knowing how the affirmative coming around. Sometimes one shifting is about the affidavit and what their framework of advocacy entails whenever I turn the one to see often. It means that even if we read generics or find prep, they just find ways to recontext their advocacy frameworks on the one. Our friends, our voters, the South judges, the Valley, Ryan's White, schools on the bait, drop their doors, kids, set norms, and territory, to competing interpretation, reason, and debates, arbitrary judgment, and race, and record from argumentation, also collapses in bright lines, operating on the offense, events, and no arbitrary impact turns a point. Going all in theory, kills substance, and execution, which also in time frame, people just issue checking real views, which also norms, and different creatures, theory, and always because of the self they can beat it quickly. Deep points are logical for even proving your fair. Always in the logical limits, that's one of the arguments. No new one of the paradigms, new one of the paradigms, many. 
theoretical offense and fairness versus his better. Always the affirmative one fairness is concession process based on space again with a winner loser time and flipping their around. Concession rules mean this had to interpretation and everyone terminal line two self defeating all the winners arguments assume that judge about them fairly, which can see authority actively hacking onto mother's three documents is massive and fair, but we can't test alternative liberation strategy and interpretation assume that the methods correct, which increases our mind to include the world for deliberation. Every productive discussion of evolution strategy seems equal playing field fairness with the ability to contribute to discussion, which only interpretation itself five minutes about their impact and just misapplication for not reason why they're very structured best. Six of truth testing interpretations that the affirmative correct, but we can't do that if we can engage. Next off, interpretation debate to fill position side boxes they must not post the full text of the boxes in the card side box but instead they use the wicked five function verbatim i've been for certain a screenshot of what that looks like violation oh it's there prefer one three on prayer becomes atrocious when you don't make your tax bold and just throw a massive amount of text on the wiki which makes it nearly impossible to look at arguments or interpretation also to your trace you can just have a bunch of loopy arguments which is very fantastic and you're more upfront about your arguments choose inclusions possible for disabled debaters with this graphic or visual impairments to sort through your wiki because you know when you determine when a position begins or ends it's an independent voter because it's gateway should actually any other arguments three and you see rules look at the screenshot of the doc there's an independent voter because it's contagious of debate meaning without a debate cannot operate free learning span and always cultivates passive solution makes to be all interest managing the wiki be influencing harder next off interpretation the affirmative must be specified comprehensive role of the ballot or judge in the form of text and the where they call offense links back to the rule of the passage is whether or not post fiat or preacher offense advantage of what constitutes the offense with implications on how to wait violation of no standards one engagement knowing what counts as offense is prerequisite to make arguments as possible engaging the affirmative our interpretation shows that i read something relevant to your method knowing how to wait gives us a standard especially choosing there are no normal what performance engagement looks like there is for you to often see impacts able education when two shifts has the night we don't learn anything this also gets novice inclusion because now they can learn our arguments around viewpoint turns the entirety of the affirmative your impact your premise on engaging with issues of pressure but no one takes seriously a position that can be clashed with three strategy you can recontextize your world about to make up reasons why my offense doesn't link in the one air framing you can't use your world about my shell my shell simply constrains how you read your world about my method your world about what specifications so if i'm winning compared to offense the shell always even if method based in general preclude theory if they go for at first percent the abuse of my shell since they should have specified the one i see next off the role of the ballot is to, is to determine whether the resolution is true or false statement. A point, anything else moves seven to one C. The framing collapse in CMSA issue that the theory of power is better than another before you adopt it. B point, the ballot says, but after a neg, based on a topic five, did you find to negate as an truth of an affirmative to prove true, which means it's constitutional jurisdictional. Three points, the most logical since you don't say both for the player who shifts to miss three points. The better player wins since debate is a game with rules given by how there's a winner and loser. All cross by all the work done above. Answers collapse to truth testing since require truth value. I truth testing is false, requires proving that it's true that truth testing is false. In inclusion is falsely important because just because something's a perks, it does make it more important. D point, nothing leaves us around other than the result of the ballot, which means even if there's a high purpose, it doesn't change anything. You should just write whatever's important on the ballot and vote for me. E point. Roll the bats on phrases, binaries, maximize the weaver information, including offense, healer, free mechanisms, and insist that the judge has to intervene and see who is closest to solving a problem. F point. Other roll the bats open the door for personal lives, debaters, and factor into decisions and compare who is more oppressed, which causes violence in a space where some people go to escape. One, now you should negate. One, lethal means having a high goal tolerance by mere but in time, weapon can not a liquid that can get hit in alcohol. Two, if we would divide time into discrete zero duration slices, no motions happen in each of them, so taking them all as a whole motion is possible. Three, state means the particular condition that someone or something is in a specific time, but arcs of reduction to get you can't pass a plan. Four, two means NK movement by mirror but the word art cannot move to the word provide. Five means weapon, weapons, weapons mean a means of contending against another by mirror but a means of contending can be autonomous. Six, autonomous means controlled by autonomous nervous system by mirror but laws can be controlled by the autonomous nervous system. Seven, you can't be sure anything exists besides yourself. You could be deceived by demon dreaming or simulation so that absent facts could be non existent case. The role of the ballot proper, the role of the ballot self serving arbitrary limits the scope of engagement and begs the question of the rest of the debate. Reject from Marvin's that over parameterizes content debate should be an open form to hack ideas from different directions. Anything else brackets out certain modes of a knowledge production with your evidence would obviously disagree with. The role of the ballot proper, one competition, the competent nature of debate, Rex, the interactive nature of debate. The judgments are between two competing speech acts and the debaters are trying to beat each other. This is the wrong form for interaction to spill over. How does educational orientation spill over beyond the space and period? Now, judges vote on all time, nothing ever happened. Three prescription search interactions are prescriptive, each step to three can be reformulated so easily. Four competition takes out the affront the ballot becomes a securitizing object that prevents engagement with the scholarship reader. 13. Competitive debate, remember any message in capable of social change in the community or society, kind of economics and alliance with you that felt to accomplish a competitive debate. Yeah, the competitive debate can create changes of fiction and proven by political and social studies. Competitive debate is premised upon the exception that debates argumentation. Five, no evidence for the power of the ballot. Debate specific negative presumption. Reader 13. The essential components of interactions that might make a difference in academics have published a study to support social change until such a study is conducted. Judges should not take it for granted. Now, the line by line proper. The argument, uh, yeah, the line by line proper. The read and briefly evidence, eight points not true. A lot of black debaters are at the TOC spreading black scholarship. People like Zion, as well as your teammates, prove this argument. Be points that many people no Afro pessimism, which means that empirics should definitely flow negative. Third, their argument is just that policy making is racist, but that does not mean that debate renders black scholarship invisible. They are missing internally because why debate necessitates things like policy making. They read this app, which proves that it's not true. E point it's an empirical claim without an empirical warrant. And F point is that they've conceded across the nation that presumption definitely or they've conceded that the affirmative triggers presumption because voting affirmative really does nothing. If anything, they just say it's a good model, but obviously that would cross things like cruel optimism, which is net worse for voting than because it securitizes their advocacy to the ballot and wouldn't do anything and it gives off perception that it would. Their argument 
arguments proper about the role of the judge in promoting access to Black's fellowship. Eight point is super arbitrary. Begs the question of sort of how we can determine who is Black and what is Black. Is 50% Black Black enough for the world about? This is the question that the one and the one needs to answer. If anything, it would just sort of gatekeep people. Men, it would sort of like gatekeep people. And then third is that people would sort of pretend to be Black under the world about, which means that obviously would be bad. Uh, the the offense. You misread Voros, not AI bad, but fears of color around the contemporary humanity that view laws as future violators of human rights against a more empathy of the human, which reifies the liberal rights, bearing subject, which is the root cause of racism, amnesty, and war too. Killer Roberts and is a violation of human rights in the future, and then we the dominant weapons being foreign decision about killing reifies the human as a right to be liberal human subject, racial grammar, the circuit effect under which techno liberals accounting for humanity instances where humanity is different against technology of violence, suppressing human subject as a violation and less than human other futurities that emerge in debates like Killer Roberts describe the colonial racial logic undergoing human nature and the period racial legacy structure activism seeking to ban Killer Roberts legal ban on Killer Roberts not for peace, we figure permissible killing the human of an extensive category capable of infolding more others into the realm. Cut the card at realm. This turns the after action to smooching for the, the true perpetuators of anti black violence, which are human creating programming, deploying laws. It's tried to move past it, which is why more autonomy always they have to win intrinsic claim. None of their evidence is about it. Just talking about things like automation causes racism, which obviously is not intrinsic to laws. Ramsey is about white program laws, not laws. Laws are influenced by the situation developing, which means that they've misidentified the problem. They are affected by emotions that result in racist actions. Claim 15. Some churches are really racist, but at the end of the anger, other doing image video regards can be never motivated the wrong reason for any reason at all, but the card at all. Uh, ready? Yeah. Hey, uh, the role the ballot stuff, uh, how do we integrate, uh, actually, what comes first, uh, the truth testing offense or the theory shells? Uh, we have not made a claim yet. Uh, Sure. Uh, the arguments about the role of the ballot being self-serving and arbitrary, why is it self-serving and arbitrary to want or to forward a model of discussion about Black scholars? So we say that that might be a good idea, but our argument is that you shouldn't sort of just hone in on the discussion. We obviously should talk about other things as well in relation to the topic. Your My argument is that your role of the ballot sort of arbitrarily restricts what we should talk about in relation to the topic, which is bad. Because why is it arbitrary to restrict it to race? Action. Like, why is Very that well. a bad thing? Why is it bad to be like, we should talk about racism? Well, we should talk about racism, but it's not a question of just focusing on that. Obviously, we can- No, no, why? Why? Why is that a bad question. thing? Why is why is just focusing on racism a bad thing? That's not our argument. I'm saying that arbitrarily limiting the engagement or like how we relate- Why is that arbitrary? That. Because we should talk about other issues of oppression as well, or just like the resolution, whether or not it's true Great. or false. Those are Great. other things we should talk about. Uh, in the the roll the bat spec stuff. Uh, yeah. Actually- that's fine. Um, I guess the second shell, why didn't you just ask me uh, to disclose site positions and like Wikify, Wikify, whatever um, the second intern was talking about? I think that if it's a good norm, debaters should follow it regardless. They shouldn't rely on other people asking them just to meet an interpretation. Okay. Uh, so reasonable. why didn't we just like say have like a substantive debate and said like you just letting me know, like let's, what is it called? Uh, disclose like this, yeah, and then we talk about the yeah. app. Well, yeah, there are multiple reasons for why you should do it, uh, like independently, not because other people ask you to meet an interpretation. Wait, well, how am I supposed to know what, like, to meet your interpretation? Like, what is the well, basis okay, for okay. why so, is it the expectation the argument, of the right? affirmative or like, a debate in general, it's or, like follow your norms? If it is unpredictable, then it would it should be quote unquote frivolous, so you can easily beat it back. You have posited a norm by not disclosing through Wikify. You okay. probably think it is good. Uh, you should be able so to defend that. Roll the ballot. Uh, I guess uh, a debater does something anti-black underneath the roll of the ballot. Uh, what should the judges do? Uh, the round would stop anyways, regardless under any roll of the ballot. If someone said the n-word. Okay. Uh, next question. I guess you said that there's black debaters that make it visible. Uh, how many black debaters are in ELMs of the TOC right now? I don't know the exact count, but there are um, black debaters in the US. Just like two. Um, the next question I have is uh, <laughs> the responses you have uh, is why is it arbitrary to talk about black scholarship? Uh, I, I guess like what's the implication to like people pretend to be black? Well, I think that should be an impact in of itself. It's the role of the judge argument. You said like people pretend to be black, so we can't use it. W why is that? Why is that a reason why we shouldn't just focus on black scholarship? Pretending to be black is good when you're not black. Like, what? Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, starting prep.
123. Uh, the order is the AF, uh, the first shell, the truth testing arguments. Oh, sorry, you said the AF, the first shell, and then truth testing? Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to cover the other two shells? Or? Uh, they're going to be addressed on the first shell. OK, OK, OK. Um, they're dark now. Uh, let me record it. Um, anyone not ready? Great. No counter roll. The judge means that you should probably vote affirmative. It's to promote access to black scholarship with three Brinkley traditional Bay has caused debaters to throw around random existential catastrophes, pure procedurals, and operating instead of talking about real issues such as anti-blackness. The one AC's performance is the reason why they should lose the reason of operators and theories away of ignoring discussions of anti-blackness. It's not a coincidence that the NC never talks about black people. There are a few implications. One, it precludes all the fairness and claims since racism makes debate inaccessible. Unfairness can't exist without access to the round two to outweighs on type where you can talk about theory in terms, especially can uh, things like roll roll the ballot spec any time, but especially about things like racial violence are uniquely key now since educational spaces are always seeking to target them. And arguments like theory three is a huge abstraction test of the burden of things like two should be a hundred percent other way they foreclose the ability to talk about anti-blackness that are occurring around them for is that it comes where all of your generic education names those are in the context of traditional academia which one seeks to destroy seeks to destroy things that are to exclude things like black scholars and two always wonder to come modify them i.e it flips all of the competitive values arguments because your model of debate is something that means that it only matters when it's following things like the standardized norms of things like NDCA or disclosure, etc. The line by line, the first argument, group competition and spillover, that is not our burden. Rather, we say that the app is a good model of understanding what debate should like. Debate should be surrounding around things like judges voting down anti back practices like the Negatives. The next argument about prescription. No, our prescription or claim is a good idea. It says don't be anti-black, and the the framing mechanism should be one that centers on blackness because that is always ignored. The competition takes out the F. No, it's a question of our practices. It says that our methodology is in the uh, advocates we should defend need to understand the racialized impacts and the impact in it of itself, not as some footnotes and some random other impact. The black debater argument. This is super ignorant. There was like ten black debaters at the TOC, and it's not a coincidence that a lot of them were screwed over in the bubble round. The empirical claim of the empirical warrant yes it is it happens every single round and it's happening within this round i.e the one in one nc's performance is something that you just skirt the discussion especially because they didn't engage at all the arbitrary argument that is our claim black scholars are always told that they're not black enough or that it is completely arbitrary in order to guilt them into not talking about harms that uniquely affect them extend the axiom robinson one resolve states out to ban lethal autonomous weapons i in the topic as a principle through the lens of black marxism and negation of negation of racial capitals we recognize that race as epistemology domination and provide as a way to understanding why laws should be banned. Now, the line by line, they say that the uh, VOR at all is miscut, but you can extend VOR at all. One human out of the loop tech increases capital transferring slave labor to machine automation is based on the promise of post racial futurity that pretends to enter a, a world where race isn't an issue but reproduces subjugation and the process of the Ramsey and Joe's argument. Yes, it is. Laws inherently are racist because of race neutrality it extends anti blackness globally. The target victims against algorithms and racism operates as a very level of implementation, regulation, and distribution of said weapons. The theory argument. Cross by blood, so and right, racial cap uses images of anti black violence to soak fears of extinction. Every innovating forms of khaki black people at the bottom of social hierarchies, there's an overburdening. Yes, that's why there's so many interpretations that our black scholars have to read, our, our positions have to meet in order to actually have the discussions in the first stage. It's not a coincidence that they didn't engage with the app out of any meaningful and rather just go for arguments like fairness controls the internal link to argue the, those arguments. The line by line, their fairness, some it's completely subjective. A lot of race in the margin where it leads to white perspective of what fairness looks like. They have also not winning a unique same debate. It's not a 
side of fairness, it's not going to be articulated as a linear impact because there's a question of an equal level playing field that they assume just exists. The self-defeating argument, no, it's not self-defeating. Rather, we say that you should focus on things like black education, not the generic education claims that they made. The dogmatism argument, no, it's a question of testing our authors. Your interpretations are something that skirt that discussion away from it. They'll make a bunch of like case turns analysis, but if it's not in the context of things like black scholars, then you should not vote about it. The misapplication, of dirt, no, it's a question of debate and being super anti-black. The Roll the ballot stuff are the roll the ballot or truth testing. Arts comes first is a question of whose truth we're actually looking at. Second is that if it's a question of inclusion, truth testing is a horrible model, at least a bunch of a priori that never actually engage with the substance of it. They'll always win as a way. Those come first. Three is that even if it's a consistent far, we are winning as a way. Debate should be centered on black, uh, black lives. It doesn't matter if this is how debate is right now, if we have reframed what debate should be. Okay, uh, I'll start five minutes now. Uh, what are all the arguments against theory? There's like a lot. Do you want me to yeah. go through like all of them? Yeah, can you go through all of them? Uh, yeah, well, one role judge because fairness claims uh, since racism makes debate inaccessible and fairness can't exist without access to the round two that weighs on time frame. You talk about theory interps anytime, especially things like a role, the ballot spec, but discussions about things like racial violence are uniquely leaking now since educational spaces always seek to target them. The third is an abstraction just said the burden of skew would be 100%. Otherwise, they for you foreclose the ability to talk about anti-blackness that is occurring around us. Uh, the fairness claims on the line by line. Our argument is it's completely subjective. It relies on a notion that on uh, it relies on some notions of that allows you to race to the margins where we assume that there's some fairness, equal level fairness field, even if it is a linear impact. Uh, what is called the okay, yeah, what is called fairness is something that always benefits those who are non-black. Like, you just line by line everything else, right? Yeah, self-defeating. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> are there any vetting issues except um like half what are there any vetting issues except or like yeah are there any vetting issues from the one year uh yeah your performance is anti-black uh why is this theory the theory arguments uh the self-serving arbitrary claim that you made at the top those are pretty problematic Return self serving. Uh, the abstraction just said, can you explain it? Yes. Uh, 
the race to re theory as a way of foreclosing our ability to talk about anti blackness is problematic. Uh, the implications of this is twofold. The eight point is that it proves as why the performance of that is something that doesn't actually create things like fairness or accessibility because it, uh, what is it called? It's one that's already shut down those conversations. I like when you get up and read these arguments uh, with no contextualization at all to read Brinkley or to any of the black scholars in the 1AC, that's okay. bad. And uh, the second the, one is that it says the burden is used 100%. Okay. What? What's the response to this um, sixth point uh, on fairness first? Is there a response? Uh, that was the argument on the fairness constitutive stuff that. Of uh, not Spanish constitution, the self defeating one. Self defeating? Can you yes. explain that argument? Yeah. Uh, the argument on there was that uh, that you should prioritize things like black education, even if it is a question of like our arguments assume that they're fairly evaluated or that you can test the truth of those arguments. This should always be contextualized in the context of black education. So okay. it's not a question of promoting fairness, rather, it's a question of consistency with black education. Okay, that's fine. All right. Uh, the order, it's going to be Cult Peacemaker. Um, I'm going to start first on like the fairness first debate. Uh, actually, just start on truth testing and then Cult Peacemaker and then uh, the case. I'll signpost um, from there. But before, before um, I go to truth testing, there will be a short. Uh, overview. Uh, can you repeat that over overview? Yeah, yeah I'm not. Sorry. So, uh, okay. yeah, so there's going to be a short overview at the top, truth testing uh, quickly, cult peacemaker, but it's going to start with the fairness first uh, versus like accessibility debate, and then um, case. <laughs> What's like the third thing that you're saying? I keep hearing like cope. Peacemaker? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. The third the theory the third theory shell. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Uh is anybody not good? Okay, perfect. Upable for me, you should draw a strong line from the one or to the two or you shouldn't let new two or extrapolations of arguments since I don't have a three nurture respond allows them to sandbag all their way into the two or which creates late breaking theory debates from Brancis and Wesley testing norms. Even if you buy two or wing, prefer two or wing over two or wing, eight points in army, two or wings introduce your so we have more time to debate and determine if the beast arms are true. B points of them, the two is longer, so we have more time to develop our wing arguments instead of making quick lips and the three minute two or truth testing. Frame you on truth testing say you conceded a game over argument, which is going to change the entirety of the theory debate. You conceded that inclusion is a fallacy of origin because just because something is a prerequisite does not make it more important. Even if you don't think this argument is true or not going to validate, you should use it as a tiebreaker for the rest of the debate. Come on, this is doubles of the TOC. You should definitely be able to mind to be and respond to it. I'll extend the argument proper. It's a fallacy of origin. Just because sort of I need to go to the car for like, for example, just because I need to go to the dentist and I need to drive my car does not make driving the car more important than getting my uh getting my teeth. It was conceded, which means actually I went straight to blink. The fairness first debate now. I'm going to go for two arguments on the fairness first debate. First is the six points. It's truth testing. Their interpretation assumes that the affirmative is correct, but we can't do that if we can engage. Obviously, fairness first assumes that we should care about things in accessibility, but the only way we can contest the affirmative theory of power is through things like fair norms. You should ask yourself, can black debaters engage in things like infinite conditionality or infinite sort of nibs in the one and see? Obviously, that's not the case, which means that even if sort of accessibility uh, matters, procedural fairness is a prior question, and it's the only way to rectify those arguments. Conditionality is bad, and it prevents, allows us to, uh, it allows like black debaters to engage. Second argument to go for is it misses the boat. Their impact turn sort of shows a misapplication of fairness, not a reason for why the very structure of it is bad. Their argument is just that it's a question of debate being bad, but that's the entire point of the argument that we tried to preempt. Their argument is why debate currently is bad is not the argument that we're not advocating for. We are not advocating for current status quo debate. We are advocating for sort of a fair norm. Obviously, fairness would not mean that black discussions get sidelined to the side. Fairness means that everyone is on an equal playing field, which means that black discussions would also have equal weight as things like policy making as well, which means that it should that way. It was conceded, which means that they just fundamentally misunderstand the argument. Now we'll do the line by line on sort of the argument for the truth. Uh, we'll do the line by line on the six point. They said that it's a question of prioritizing things like black education, cross play all the work done above. Even if we should prioritize things like black education, the only way I see why we can do those or sort of prioritize and learn about those arguments is through things like fairness in the first place. Uh, the stuff they made on case about uh, fairness or like the rule, um, 
inclusion. We'll do that word here now. They say role of the judge. No, we posit that fairness outweighs, which means that even if they're wearing the role of the judge, it's a power question. Theory is a power question to evaluate uh, the substance layer. That was the work done above. They say theory interpretation you can evaluate any time, but not their argument. No, our argument also controls the internal defense. We'll do that work on cold peacemaker, which means that if we're winning internally to accessibility, then it definitely cuts both ways. Also, this argument just cuts both ways. We can talk about sort of racism outside of round with three things like critiques as well, but we should set norms within round because it's the only place we can develop norms. You say abstraction to sad. No, it does not close our ability to talk about anti-blackness. All the work I'm gonna or all of the work I already did, I'm gonna do in the future on cold peacemaker proper proves that we talk about things like anti-blackness as well. Also, uh, yeah, they say fairness is completely subjective. Ask yourself how infinite nibs or condo is subjective. Obviously, it's uh, it's like it's obvious obviously it's unfair. They've also just conceded the entirety of a shell, which means that even if it's sort of subjective, it's definitely unfair in this instance. Go to cold peacemaker. Extend the interpretation to affirmation exclusive like comprehension rolled about the form of text in the one sheet where the clip right offense inspectors rolled about such as whether post we have offense or matters and what constitutes the offense with implications on highway. First question you should ask yourself, how do you about the shell in relation to the Greek? Problems they've conceded multiple reasons from the one you see that the shell comes first. That was a work done above, and which means I should only change the link. Second is that is second is preclusion. My method is your old about with specification. Yours is just rolled about. So if the former is better, it's a reason for vote for me, even if the method debates are K debates in general preclude theory, which takes out a majority of their arguments. My argument is sure the affirmative may be a good model, but argument is that we need to read the affirmative plus something, which means that if they are not winning, why we should not specify, then you should hold the line. Obviously, the one in C's norm, uh, yeah, obviously the one in C's form is not violent. Here's the abuse story. Our model of debate forces K debaters to give a specification over their theory of how functions and how to weigh under so that the people who don't have experience in literature have a shot with engaging in the critique. This always your critique on novice inclusion. Think about how many times novices come back demoralized and ask about what ontology or the hyper real is. If it was explained to the one to see proper with how to weigh or gauge, the debate community would be so much better. This is our interpretation, which also controls the internal to the sort of black education that the one the, that the one to see talks about, which means that they can't just go for the accessibility grants and in the two hours. Secondly, our model forces bears between their buzzwords to everyone else. Think about how many times, uh, yeah, like think about how many times Kate just repeat a huge buzzer and don't actually explain what's going on. We'll force them to take a hard stance in the one issue proper. All these arguments are sort of conceded. It's unfair because they can sort of shift out of arguments and it controls the strongest return to the strategy. Their tuner or in their model, the tuner is impossible so they can make reasons in the one year for why only the one issue should be validated, which always forces a one year restart. These are all conceded, which means I should, I'm going to change the link. Also, they conceded the entirety of the theory shell, which means I'm going to apply some defense on case, which means that you should use it as a risk of a tiebreaker. There's literally a conceded theory shell. I'm applying risk of defense. It should be fairly easy to determine which layer. Comes first and you should on. Uh, go to case. Their argument for why our performance is arbitrary is not labeled as a voting intrusion that you shouldn't do it. B point, it literally trivializes actual uh, black people getting uh, shot in the street. Ask yourself how me reading the one and see by positing things that are good norms is violent. This answer was just not answered. This was just, this question was just not answering the one. I wish I shouldn't do the work for them. It was not labeled as a voting sheet. Don't do the work for them. Uh, the Adness of Oricard. Extend the case term. That's the second Adness again, Oricard. The after you search autonomous weapons and surrogates for human progress by attempting to reclaim meaningful human control. Viewing laws as violent simply because of the lack of empathy and emotion resulting from autonomy recreates a humanist violence since it extends that logic to non-human bodies like black bodies that argues human induced violence like police brutality and the war on terror are justified since they were able to recognize dignity and their feeling of their victim which is a smoke screen for endless warfare this card was just functionally conceded they just extended their offense without giving an explanation which means i should hold the line and should outweigh on strength of link which means even if i'm losing on the theory layer i'm definitively winning we'll do some weighing now they extend the war at all evidence it literally is just in the context of automation that was also the one air extension but ours it's in the context of lethal autonomous weapons and the humanistic binary contextual to their framing mechanism which means that we should outweigh specificity. If anything, the argument for why it reproduces subjugation is our argument because it says that laws create these things because of the fact that uh, because of the fact that they are not able to feel things like empathy. That is our argument and we have that we, can, we are a prior question. They say laws are inherently racist and they target victims. They've conceded the entirety of the Lin 15 evidence saying that even if it is true that laws are evident or laws are violent, the alternative would be much worse because the people who are sort of violent that program laws are the soldiers. Soldiers are openly racist and nationalistic, which means that the alternative to the one you see is definitely worse. Uh, I have 123. Uh, starting from now, uh, why do you keep calling the shell cult peacemaker? Uh, it's a commonly referred to shell. That's how. Okay. Like, what is cult peacemaker? What? What's cult peacemaker? Oh uh, well, I didn't refer to it in the true nar, but cult peacemaker. Is yes, you did. You said cult peacemaker <laughs> repeatedly. But cult peacemaker is. Uh, Great. Shell. Fun calling your shells a gun.
Okay. Uh, the role of the judge, fairness. Uh, is everyone ready? Great. In double double finals of double octo finals of TOC between two non-black debaters, the question of your ballot is what model of debate do you want to endorse? They've conceded that the performance of the one AC that makes this space inaccessible leads to all the harms. One AC read Brinkley card address. They conceded the card. The one AC was a perfect example of things like a priori theory shells and NC that never talks about anti-blackness in a theory shell named after a gun, e.g. called peace or which is probably independent reason why they should you should drop them either way. Is a way in which debaters are told it's okay not to talk about anti-blackness. The inclusion of fallacy stuff doesn't take out our argument because the telos point of our role the judge is black accessibility and scholarship it also takes out your fairness claims because the fallacy means that we don't look at the prerequisite or like things that control their internal like the, the focus on said and goal also do you if you don't understand this argument and you can't explain it back to me then you should also don't feel comfortable voting on it they have conceded why they don't the role of the ballot check doesn't implicate our argument this is not in the context of role the ballot rather the role of the judge they've conceded that you don't have the jurisdiction to vote on things like anti-black performances now i'm just going to go on a little rant about why their performance was so bad. It doesn't whether it matter whether or not winning things like the contentual offense of are proved by the performance of the 1AC has been inconsistent with things like black scholarship. They say that we trivialize it. No, it's not. We said that you have anti-black practices in the debate space and that you should lose for that. The specific example pointed out by the 1AR is when they call things like call discussing about anti-black is arbitrary and self-serving. This is what happens all the time. Reed Brinkley talks about this, how black scholars, black authors are continually told that their scholarship does not matter at all. There was no weighing but done with weighing besides things like the general fairness impact and the independent voter arguments on we have indicted their performance i.e their reading and contextualization of our framework is something that causes actual violence within the space it doesn't matter whether or not their interpretation is something that's like some good norm of debate if we're previewing us things like anti-back practices it's something you as a judge don't have a jurisdiction to vote for and something that should be punished punished within said debates the next piece of options i'm going for is the abstraction argument which was just a hundred percent conceded they have conceded that's why they foreclose the ability to talk about anti-blackness that are occurring around us. They always go for arguments. That's why things like fairness comes first. But you've conceded that our, our role of the judge precludes all your fairness argument, which was the one AR one on it, because of the question if you make debate and accessible and fairness can't exist with any access to the round. The fairness debate. Going for the first argument that it's completely subjective, I whose fairness are we talking about? Their only argument is that it's just objectively bad to read things like like 30 condo counterplans against like a black debater, but that's not our argument. Our argument is that those conceptions of fairness are always done that come from privilege because it assumes some equal level playing field, even if it is a linear impact. It's a question of debaters having the privilege in order to stand higher. The second argument I go for is the black education argument. It's an impact in and of itself. Don't vote on fairness controlling internal link evidence because A point is that it proves its way. It's the end point of all issues be an impact in itself and b point is that we've run as why things like the fairness claims are problematic because it allows for debaters to just assume or allows for debaters to take this race neutral understanding of what debate looks like especially in the tournament where most black debaters are already out uh, good round good babe.
Okay. Um, is everyone back? Uh, yeah. Uh, am I? Oh, no, no, everyone's back. Okay. Um, cool. I don't know if either of you guys are seniors, but I know I've judged both of you guys a lot. Both of you guys are really good, so I was really happy to judge you on doubles, so congrats. Um, congrats on making it to doubles of the TOC, both of you. It was a 3-0 for the AF. Um, I can go first. I sort of took the longest. Um, I think my decision-making process has threefold. Uh, the first thing I sort of want to figure out is the do the, does the fallacy of origin stuff matter? Because I think that's like kind of top level and it sort of uh, filters the rest of the stuff. I don't think it does for two reasons. The first thing is that most of the two in our wing is also prerequisite wing that the fallacy of origin stuff indicts. I like the truth testing claim is like fairness comes as a prereq because otherwise we can't engage. And a lot of the other fairness stuff is also prereq wing, which means if I don't use the fallacy of origin wing, then I literally just can't weigh between the two because like 99% of the wing has been the prereq wing that the fallacy of origin stuff indicts, which means I don't think this stuff really matters that much. Uh, I think the other reason why I don't think it matters too much is that the one year, two year reasons for accessibility are not just like the prereq stuff, but also like discussions of race, et cetera, or distance from social life and policy. Um, and we have an ethical obligation to talk about it, which I think is a little bit distinct from the uh, prerequisite stuff. Uh, that's the first question. I think the second question I have to answer is like, does theory outweigh the independent voters? Not just like fairness, but like the role of the ballot spec. Uh, and I think this is like the problem with the fairness debate too, uh, and is the reason why I don't think they outweigh the independent voters. But most of this stuff are just not contextualized to the independent voters of the 1ER and 2ER. They're contextualized to like answering the substance of the 1AC, i.e. like the framing, the contention, etc. But not about like claims about like your practices or what you've said to be like messed up and racist. Uh, so I think like claims from the two and R on face are true. For example, like truth testing, we allows us to like, or not truth testing, like having a more specific role the ballot allows us to engage with the app better and answer it substantively. But I don't think it's responsive to independent voters that are like, you shouldn't call the shell the cult peacemaker or the, saying like their role the ballot is arbitrary self-serving, et cetera, which I think are separate claims that like these wing arguments just don't respond to. Um, Sort of the last question I have to answer is the just fairness outweigh the independent voters. I think most of my thoughts above apply. Um, I also, so like the truth testing stuff is about contesting the 1AC, not independent voters. Um, and I think the what the 2 ER does a pretty good job on like my role as a judge to like reject anti-black practices, which I don't think the fairness claims interact with that much, but yeah. Um, I can go next. Uh, I thought the two era broke down pretty similar to the way that I thought about my decision. Um, I think that first, uh, I think that the app is just ahead on a lot of things. For example, the role of the judge thing, the access wing between uh, sort of the F, um, I guess, meta level offense that they're going for at the end, and fairness that you're just not really answering at the end of the day for me. And I'm not going to do sort of embedded work for you, et cetera. But I also just don't personally really care much about a lot of that because I think that uh, my paradigm was pretty clear that I want to evaluate a lot of the strategies that the 1NC read. Um, but also, I think that the 1AR and 2AR have convinced me not to in any way um, because I think that they've established why, like, the things that you've read are actively uh, sort of bite into the things that the app has said are bad that you willingly chose to read in the 1NC regardless. Like, the app is like, people call black scholarship arbitrary or role of the judges and role of the ballot like it's arbitrary. And your first thing to say on cases like, lol, your role of the judges is arbitrary, which sort of was like a fuck you to the app and when I saw it happen. And so I think that that sort of stuff matters to me a lot. I think that like you need to think about sort of the decisions you make before um, you say certain things. Like, yeah, I know cult peacemaker, you didn't probably say that to intend anything bad, but it is like a violent metaphor to be using. And you should know that before you choose to actively say those things in debate rounds. And that's sort of the claim that the app is making that people are able to walk into debate rounds without having to take, uh, take those things into consideration.
operation and get away with it, at which point it would seem to proactively instill that or proactively justify that I should, you know, take a stance and have an obligation to take a stance against that. That being said, I also just think that the app is obviously ahead on a technical level in terms of just winning that the role of the judge is how I should evaluate this debate. I think that they're winning the independent voter is a prior question to any of this fairness stuff because it doesn't matter if you're racist, but also if people were unable to access a debate round, it doesn't matter if the procedure is good. Um, one small thing, I think, I guess, about the two in our sort of story on roll the ballot spec, I think it's a little bit unclear to me why um, the sort of what the sort of offense you're going for is in the parts where you're talking about the novices or something for a couple reasons. I think I'm not entirely sure why being able to spec parts of a roll the ballot would solve those issues of novices not knowing what the word ontology means, for example, um, because it's unclear to me why I couldn't just use the same buzzwords and clarifying that role of the judge or why that doesn't apply to other forms of debate too. Um, and second is that it's unclear to me how, um, I guess this is similar to what I just said, but I, I guess it's unclear to me how you have pushed back against the characterizations of models of debate like theory, truth testing, and big stick impact scenarios that the app has made throughout the debate. So I think conceding sort of the top part of the app and then proceeding to read the exact things that they say are bad is a bad idea. If you're going to do that, you need to either have a much, much more robust defense of those models of debate, or you need to try to sort of diversify the way that you're contextualizing the offense you get out of those, which I think you were trying to do, but I think it just needs to be more specific to that app itself. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go really quick because both of them have kind of just said my RFD. So I really don't need to go that ham on it. Um, but as someone who in my paradigm, like very explicitly says, like, I like, you know, theory debate that's very explained, implicate all your stuff, like make sure that you are providing a very, very clear storyline. I don't think that happens in the 2NR. The 2NR is extremely messy for me and extremely hard to follow, especially because there's this like jump from three different sheets at one point. And it's like, there's one argument here, there's one argument there, there's another argument here, but somehow they're all getting linked back together, which is extremely messy. And also I think problematic because I don't think your storylines are clear on any of those flows. So I think jumping further between each of them only, you know, reifies the idea that I don't necessarily think the 2NR has this complete strategy uh, um, that is solid in the 2N. Uh, and I, I very much agree. I think the 1AR and the 2AR are doing a very phenomenal job at kind of implicating all of these like arguments that have already been preempted in the affirmative like don't say any of this and immediately like the moment the <laughs> the line by line happens on the affirmative and that's like the first two words I hear I was like well shit like what, what am I supposed to do now um so I I very much think that it's a question of um like rhetorical strategies as well like make sure that like you you are fitting the vibe of the room like it's very clear on my paradigm that I say that I value rhetorical strategies as well because I definitely think they can be violent in the round for sure um like the way you say stuff really really matters and as someone who's you know very in like the social sciences life in college like definitely the way that you say stuff and implicate your evidence um can inherently be violent to a lot of people depending on how how you say stuff so I I just say like be conscious of the arguments you're reading and be conscious of the 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 ways in which you're positing those arguments and using them in the round uh because i do think that they number one are being rubbed the wrong way and i don't think that they're being explained the right way that they need to be and i don't necessarily think that there's a a proper engagement level with the actual like thesis of the affirmative. I think that there's like these, these weird selection arguments of like this one card is being read the wrong way, but then there's like 12 responses in the one error. So like why that's not true. Um, so I just think that there's a lot of stuff that I think the one N and the two NR need to focus and hone in a little bit uh, before we start having like these more, like, I guess like more messy theory debates, especially cause there was so much stuff going on. <laughs> it, it got very um, out of hand very, very quickly. I can tell for like all three of us I remember we were all looking at one point and we were all like so that's just that's just the vibe happening but again if either of you have any other questions please feel free to email me my email is always open uh I don't have any questions thank you all for judging yeah I don't have any um thanks everyone for judging cool. good job everyone <laughs>